Robi jiji la ujanja waliona macho ya kando wasiojali utu na wanaolewa vizuri mbinu za mlango wa nyuma ndio wamiliki wa jiji pasi na woga hatua zao kilo na potembea zimelindwa na maafisa wa usalama huku bodi za serikali zikionje rahisi za kupenya ama kweli jijini Nairobi dhana ya kula na wenzako ni hai usipotaka vikwazo kila pembe ya jiji la Nairobi na vyonga vyake na miji mikuu hapa nchini vipande vidogo kwa vikubwa vya ardhi vina alama na maandishi haya yanayokutahadharisha wewe kutonunua vipande hivi vya ardhi au kujaribu kuviuza alama zinazotoa taswira kamili kwa tunaishi katika nchi ambayo ina mmomonyoko mkubwa wa madini Alama hizi pia zinakuambia wewe mtazamaji usalama wa kipande cha ardhi hiyo upo katika mikono ya tamaa ya baadhi ya vigogo, maafisa na watu wanaojulikana vizuri na baadhi ya maafisa katika wizara ya ardhi. Why do you think it's written every in so quite a number of places this land is not for sale? This land is not for sale because people are being duped every other day. Meza ya upekuzi ya KTN inazamia jamaa watano wasio na uhusiano wa damu waliojuana na kupalilia uhusiano wao kwa hisani ya kipande cha ardhi katika mtaa wa Dagoreti Riruta kusajili nambari 5809 Edward Mburu ni afisa wa ubora katika Wizara ya Elimu ya Juu na Mnunuzi wa Ardhi Ndugu yake kama Mburu alikuwa mhusika wa karibu na msaidizi katika ununuzi wa ardhi George Washira Kanyoni kufikia sasa anatambulika kama mmiliki wa ardhi aliyokuwa kinunua Edward Mburu. Jamaa huyu Boniface Ndungu toka mwanzo wa sakata hii alijitambulisha kama ndugui George Washira Kanyoni. Kwa wanao mtambua George Washira Kanyoni wanasema kuwa yeye ni adimu kama maziwa ya kuku. Picha zake tulizonazo ni kutoka kwa stakabadhi zilizo mikononi mwa mnunuzi wa ardhi Edward Mburu na ambazo tulithibitisha kutoka kwa chapa za kitambulisho chake. Jinsi miaka ya ujana inapozidi kumpiga chenga Edward Mburu katika miaka yake ya sitini hivi aliamua kutafuta kiji sehemu cha ardhi awekeze kisha asahau masaibu ya baada ya kustaafu matarajio yake yalimwacha akitamani ulimwengu upasuke baada ya kupoteza shilingi milioni sita katika sakata ya ardhi alionunua maeneo ya Dagoreti ununuzi ambao uliongozwa na ndugu yake Daniel Kamamburu There was a young man I used to know before We actually where I had my workshop for our neighbors He was doing some uh, he had a barber shop or he was employed as a barber And uh, on my way back home from uh, town I met him He told me that there is a plot they are selling with his step brother at Kawangore. And uh, by then he gave me some contact for a guy who I'm going to find there. Who was supposed supposedly to be the caretaker. 
I invited my brother, who was to buy, who was to purchase the plot. And uh, we went there for the second time. We viewed, and uh, we decided now, let's make the other step. We meet the real owner. Because this young man by the name Boniface Ndungu oh, was saying that he is not the bonafide holder of the title. It was his brothers. So we agreed and uh, we met in the evening. And uh, that is where now, uh, of course, uh, the owner, George, gave, <coughs> gave me the details about uh, the costs. At first he shot up. He said the price is, uh, is uh, 9 million. Uh, we agreed at 6 million and therefore we, the other stage now was uh, now to confirm about the documentation. Aliyekuwa muzaji wa kipande hiki cha ardhi kwa nambari 58809 ni George Washira Kanyoni. Jamaa aliyejawa na ujanja wa kupidukia na mshawasha mkubwa kwa ushirika wake na baadhi ya maafisa serikalini. Jamaa huyu alikuwa tayari kucheza mchezo wake kwa ushirikiano na mwenzake tuliyemtambua kwa jina Peter kama umunene. Wili hawa wamebuni njia za kuwapora wahangaisha na kuwafilisisha wa Kenya wasiotambua nia na njama wanazoendesha mtaani. Baada ya masikizano katika hoteli moja mtaani Westlands jamaa hawa Edward Mburu mdogo wake kama Mburu George Washira Kanyoni na kama Umonene waliafikiana kwamba kipande cha ardhi hekari 0.1 kiligarimu shilingi bilioni sita pesa taslimu za Kenya Kama Mburu aliyekuwa kama kiunganishi wakati huu aliahidiwa kima cha shilingi laki tatu baada ya shughuli nzima ya ununuzi kukamilika. We had done our what do I call it? Uh, kind of investigating who is the real owner. And we found that there is a Peter Kamau who was collecting land from the same plot, from that plot. When we met Kamau, he told us, yes, he's collecting the rent because uh, uh, sometimes back he was trying to purchase the same plot. And he had paid about 800,000. Unfortunately, his loan, whenever he was getting the loan, could not go through. So they agreed with this uh, George Kanyoni that uh, he will be taking rent until the, the, the money he had paid is over. My brother Such took uh, a lot of time and uh, these others uh, were also indicating that uh, we are taking too long to, to do the search. So they also started off the process. But apparently, uh, the, the search came out and uh, we, we got uh, the results of uh, showing that uh, the land belongs to George Wachira. Ahadi ya serikali kufanya mfumu wa huduma za serikali kidijitali ilikuwa kwenye mtihani wakati huu na daribio la kipekee katika mauzo wa kipande hiki cha ardhi. Na kama ilivyo kanuni kabla ya kununua ardhi Kenya, Ilimbidi Edward Mburu kutafuta umiliki halali wa kipande hiki alichokuwa ameanzisha hatua za ununuzi. Hatua ya kwanza ilikuwa ni kufanya uchunguzi kutoka mtandao wa e-citizen, mtandao ambao waliamini serikali ilitumia vizuri kurahisishi wa Kenya kazi na kuwapunguzia mzigo fuleni ndefu kupata huduma. Tarehe 16 mwezi Januari mwaka 2016 Edward Mburu katika uchunguzi wake alibaini kuwa kipande cha ardhi nambari ya usajili 5809 kilimilikiwa na jamaa mmoja sio mwingine ila George Washira Kanyoni ni baada ya matokeo haya ambapo alipata uhakika kuwa muzaji wa ardhi George Washira Kanyoni alikuwa miliki halali Edward kama umburu alipata ruhusa ya kuendelea kufanya malipo kama hatua ya kwanza kumiliki kipande cha ardhi. 
Matarajio yake na ari ya kumiliki kiji sehemu cha ardhi Nairobi yalipata mwangaza pale Wizara ya Ardhi ilipoatolea ripoti kamili ikiweka wazi kwamba George Washira Kanyoni alimiliki kipande hicho cha ardhi. They are the ones who, are, who issued me with uh, all the documents that I needed to confirm whether this land really belonged to George Washira and uh, the, the once I, I I got um, there is no any other bigger office I could be able to go now to confirm about the genuineness of the land once I I received the information about the land and I had all the documentation even the the land uh, control board was also uh, using the same information because they rely on uh, the the land uh, registration information that is provided we had been given already the title a copy of the title and also as such had been taken but we didn't want to rely on uh, that particular search so i sent uh, my brother to to runs to to do the search uh, so he he went and uh, did the search but of course uh, the results uh, don't come that particular uh, immediately so we waited we continued waiting uh, for about uh, three weeks. The, the search came out and uh, we, we got uh, the results of uh, showing that uh, the rad belongs to George Wachira. Kwenye ripoti hiyo kwa nambari 468498, wizara ya ardhi ilisema kuwa kipande hiki cha ardhi kilimilikiwa na George Wachira Kanyoni kuanzia tarehe 30 mwezi wa saba mwaka wa 2015 the title is uh, original from lands office the such documents also had uh, uh, the, the the registrars that had done the search uh, one of them was uh, available and therefore he was uh, asked uh, how did you sign this document and now this land it seems it belongs to somebody else Uh, so the rad registrar uh, confirmed that he signed the that search the registrar aliandika barua kusema hiyo uh, title na hiyo search imetoka kwa ofisi yao uh, ukweli tulipata hata yule jamaa alisign hiyo search ako alikuwa kwa ofisi by then edward mburu aliomba mkopo kufanikisha ununuzi wa ardhi George Washira Kanyoni akiwa amevaa vazi lake kamili la mazoea kuwa hadawa Kenya aliwafumba jamaa hawa macho mwanzo aliwapa chapa ya kitambulisho chake kikiwa na upande mmoja tu upande wa mbele uliona jina lake sura yake nambari ya kitambulisho na siku yake ya kuzaliwa upande wa nyuma uliona maelezo ya kuzaliwa na kodi maalum ya kitambulisho haukuepo Mjanja hapa akajua kwamba itakuwa kazi ya kumkamua kuku kwa yeyote kumtafuta kwa kutumia kitambulisho chake. Pili, jamaa huyu hakufanya shughuli hii na mashahidi kama inavyohitajika wakati wa kuuza ardhi wala hakujitokeza na wakili wake. Wanunuzi hapa Edward Mburu na wakili wake Joseph Mbugwa hawakutambua hilo. Tatu, wakati wote wa shughuli ya ununuzi wa ardhi George Washira Kanyoni hakutumia nambari moja ya simu kila mara alitumia nambari tofauti na wakati mwingi yeye ndiye aliyepiga simu wala sio mnunuzi wa ardhi Edward Mburu I paid uh, the full amount and uh, then um, we had agreed that with George Washira that uh, now we are going to go we are going to go to to the office of the agent so that we can be able now to to have the transfer i went there it was a saturday and um, george did not appear siku aliyopata pesa hizo george washira kanyoni aliingia mitini kuponda mali kujiharibu na kujivinjari kwa pesa zisizo za jasho lake i decided to write to the cs uh, uh, the professor Kaimeni so that I can be able to get over this matter 
So I wrote to him, he received the letter, and uh, the letter was uh, marked to the PS uh, for purposes of, um, uh, I mean, uh, ensuring that I, I get assisted. Um, I went and I saw the PS. The PS uh, called in uh, his officer, the, the deputy principal secretary, and um, he was, uh, uh, his name is uh, Kahuho, and he was, uh, w we sat and uh, we discussed and I gave them all the details, and actually they also confirmed that uh, the processes I had taken were, were okay, and uh, after that now I was following uh, 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 Kahuho's office for, for the purposes of uh, getting uh, what belongs to me. Edward na ndugu yake kama umburu walilazimika kurudi mtandaoni baada ya shaka kuibuka kuwa. Ardhi waliuziwa ilikuwa na utata. Walirudi katika wizara ya ardhi kutafuta mmiliki wa kipande walichauziwa kwa mara ya pili. And we went back to the ranks office that is Ardhi House where they admitted that the title leader originated from them the search originated from them and they confirmed that in Latin that uh, all those documents which we had were not from uh, elsewhere but from their office. Actually it was my brother who called me mm. and uh, told me that uh, Kamau uh, um, Kamau had called him, uh, uh, Peter Kamau had called him to tell him that uh, I was sold the, the long land. Bila kuamini masikio na macho yao walirudi kutafuta majibu mbadala katika mtandao wa e-citizen kutafuta majibu zaidi. Wakati huu, umiliki wa kipande hii kicha ardhi uligeuka na kumrudia umiliki wa awali alitajwa kukimiliki kipande hii kicha ardhi kabla ya ukarabati kufanywa katika wizara ya ardhi kuonesha kuwa kilimilikiwa na George Washira Kanyoni walio na uwezo wa kubadilisha umiliki wa ardhi katika rekodi za mtandao na rekodi za wizara ya ardhi sio wengine bali maafisa wafanyikazi katika wizara ya ardhi you can go to your father's bedroom get the photocopy of your father's statement deed then you can get that photocopy you come here and you say, you know, my parents, these are the details. We want an article deed. Legally, you put in writing. I'd be shocked it's possible to get, that's what I'm trying to say, to get that title deed. Ilikuwa bayana asasa tulikuwa na mtihani mkubwa. Kumtafuta mtu ambaye wengi walikuwa kimtafuta kwa kwa tapeli ardhi. Mtani Dagoreti sehemu ya ardhi aliuziwa Edward Mburu kwa nambari ya usajili 5809 CEO. Wala haikumilikiwa na muzaji hapa ambaye ni George Washira Kanyoni. Mmiliki halali ni mama mmoja kwa jina Grace Wanjiru Nyoike. Kando na sehemu hii ni kipande cha ardhi nambari ya usajili 5810 kipande kinachomilikiwa na kama umunene na ambaye ni muhusika wa karibu wa George Washira Kanyoni. Linaloibuka ni kuwa wawili hawa walikuwa wakitumia kipande hiki cha ardhi kuwa hada wa Kenya wasiotambua. Pia inabainika kuwa George Washira Kanyoni hakumiliki kipande cha ardhi eneo hili. Kwa mchezo wa kuigiza George Washira Kanyoni alijifanya kumwajiri Samuel Njoroge kusimamia kukusanya kodi ya nyumba hizi kwenye kipande hiki cha ardhi kwa niaba yake pita kama umunene. Kupitia kwa njia za mkato wakisaidiwa na maafisa fulani katika wizara ya ardhi, mpango ulikuwa ni kumfanya George Washira Kanyoni, umiliki wa ardhi na kumchanganya mnunuzi Edward Mburu, asilewe ni kipande kipi alichokuwa kiuziwa. Arthi aliyokuwa kinunua Edward Mburu kwa sajili 1809 ni hii ambayo kwa sasa mmiliki wake ni Grace Nyoike lakini wakazi hapa wanasema kuwa Arthi aliyokuwa ameonyeshwa Edward Mburu kwamba ndiyo angenunua wanasema kuwa ni yake Peter Kamau Munene 
later when he went to confirm the same, he found that the plot had changed ownership. It belonged to an a lady. And uh, actually, it was not the very plot we were buying, you know. The, the, they are neighboring. Uh, that is when we learned that we have been conned, we have been cheated. Baada ya George Washira Kanyoni kutoweka jijini Nairobi, tulisalia na jambo moja tu, kutafuta nyumbani kwake na jamaa zake. Malalamishi yaliibuka kuwa sasa pesa alizomtapeli Edward Mburu alikuwa akizitumia nyumbani na mama yake mzazi. Tulifunga safari kuelekea kaunti ya Muranga kutafuta jamaa huyu George Washira Kanyoni, kutafuta jamaa zake kujua ni nini haswa walijua kuhusu jamaa huyu pelika pelika zetu zimetufikisha katika kata ndogo ya Taita katika kaunti ya Kirinyaga sasa tunaelekea katika kijiji cha Gitumbi ambapo tunalipokuwa ndio makao yake George Washira ambaye tunajaribu kutafuta na pia kumbaini wapo eh, George Washira alikuwa na ardhi nyingine ili kuweza labda kuunganisha mbili tatu kujua ni vipi George Washira alihusika na yupo kweli ardhi hii ilikuwa yake Tulifika katika kaunti ndogo ya Dhaita katika kaunti ya Kirinyaga ambapo baada ya chimba chimba zetu tuliarifiwa kuwa ndipo nyumbani kwa wazazi wa George Washira Kanyoni. Ndio hapo sasa. Ni hapo sasa. Hapo ndio kwa Kanyoni. Baada ya kuhangaika tukitafuta eneo la kuzaliwa kwa George Washira Kanyoni, mwishowe tulifanikiwa. Nyumbani alikozaliwa jamaa huyu na ndugu zake watatu. Hakuna aliyekuwa karibu kando na mamake mzazi Lucy Wanja. Akiwa katika mwaka wake wa na moja, Lucy Wanja anajikakamua kulima majani chai. Mojawapo ya sababu kuuza kutabika kila siku kuuza majani chai ni mwanawe, sio mwingine ila George Washira Kanyoni. Washira tukiwa tumeangana naye ni siku hiyo ilikuwa last year 2014 2015. Mm. Nikamwambia Shira baada hii shabe uzwe na banki wacha nitafute pesa sisi family tulipe hiyo deni alikuwa amechukua loan huko kwa EFC kwa agriculture. Na pesa ngapi? Sijui ilikuwa 246. Mm. 200. Mm. Sasa dia dati akalima mishiri akashindwa na kulipa. Mm. Mm. Baada sasa kwa... sasa Si tukaona tu nikaona gari ya EFC hapa. Mm. Nilichukua ngombe tatu zetu za gari nikauza. Hata huko kwa EFC niliabio. Mm. Hii shaba tu ashira za kuuza kwa sababu si yako ni yake hata ukilipa pesa. Mm -hmm. Lakini ni huko huko niliandika barua spell title D. Mm -hmm. eh. Kwa hiyo sababu hizo vitendo kuna uchungu na yeye. Sana. Kwa sababu hata mimi pesa machani mimi sipataki nichukua roni huko. Mm -hmm. Ndio tukaongeza hiyo pesa tukalipa 246. Mchezo ulianza kubadilika pale pita kama umonene alipotimbea nyumbani kwa lusi wanja akidai kuwa bwana huyo aliuza kipande chake cha ardhi kisha katoweka. Kabla ya kuondoka kwa mori uliompanda pita munene alitishia kuchoma nyumba ya mama huyo iwapo hata mfichu wa mwanawe. Na sikubuki ni februari gani? Sijuri kwa tarehe gapi. Nini walisema haswa? Walisema ati huyu mnene alisema ati atiwashira meuza shamba yake. Na akasema atafanya nini ama ati atakuja kunishamea nyumba na mimi nikada nikamripoti pasi adiki roho. Mm. Mm. Ta misi kwa nikirara hapa. Shida ikiwa nini? Sasa alisema ati atakuja kunishamea nyumba ati anajua ati atujui watu wake abu. Baada ya Edward Mburu kupiga ripoti kwa maafisa wa upelelezi kituo cha Kabete wanasema Hakuna hatu ya kumtafuta George wa Shira Kanyoni ilio chukuliwa. They asked me questions about uh, whether I have received uh, um, the title, whether I have received the, the, the transfers and uh, we have cleared the payment. What, what was my problem? Uh, so they told me they don't see uh, any case of fraud there. Um, the only case is that uh, George Washira is not available. Kama Mburu na Nduguye Edward Mburu wanasema kuwa afisa upelelezi katika kituo cha Kabete aliwonesha picha za George Washira Kanyoni akila raha katika hoteli moja kuu maeneo ya mkoa wa Kati. 
George was smartly dressed than before, and he looked to be in a posh place. We didn't call from the police where they got the clip from. We didn't, because they were telling us we will get him. In fact, it was a confirmation we will get him because we have got this video clip. Your clip is this your mm. and I wish we had it. We have, we have, we have, we have, we have done better cases or complicated cases than this one. This is not a complicated case. It's a case you give to a seasoned investigator here, for instance, and another People go to a scene of murder, now I'm going to murder, now I'm going to kill you. But we go there, we look, there is all evidence clear in there. And we go now, now we're going to shoot you, and we're going to shoot you, and we're going to kill you, and we're going to I believe, to me, my investigative works are good. You are the reporters. You have to find your police because it's confidential. You can be somebody who is this place. I have never done that. That's where it's coming from. As much as I know, your work might be very difficult on you. I wish you had come before the story. Of course, when I was young, I would have come as this. Some crimes, like they are going to be committed. Baada ya miezi michache ya uchunguzi na maafisa upelelezi katika kituo cha Kabete, afisa aliyekabidhiwa kazi ya upelelezi wa kesi hiyo Silas Kubai alihamishwa na kupelekwa katika kituo cha upelelezi katika maeneo ya Eldoret. Baadhi ya maafisa ambao hawakutaka kutajwa katika kituo cha polisi cha Kabete wanashukukuwa hatua ya kuhamishwa kwa Kubai ilichukuliwa baada kubainika kuwa alikuwa tayari ameanza kuona mwangaza katika upelelezi wa kesi hiyo. Mkuu wa upelelezi katika kituo cha Kabete Joseph Ondoro anakana madai ya Edward Mburu kwamba polisi wamelegea kuchunguza ulagai huo. Ondoro anasema kuwa maafisa wake wamekuwa kichunguza kisa hicho tangu kitendeke. Actually my investigative works really was because mine is just one of it. I listen to the story. I see whether there is any substance in the any criminal come and know that is a simple matter that can be kimbia for you. Well, find a simple suit criminal is not a system. Now in this particular case we in this particular case, we did our best. Ni bayana pwagu alikuwa kampata pwaguzi. Kazi aliopewa George wa shira kanyoni aliifanya kufasaha. Ila malipo aliofaa kutoa kwa Peter Munene, akatowe kabila jibu. Baada ya muda mfupi pita kama umonene alikoma kumtafuta George wa shira kanyoni.